Good evening. Uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order. And um, I'm going to start with a roll call uh, of the uh, board members. Uh, to my right, uh, we have uh, Mr. Joe Martinez. Here. Uh, we have our board member, uh, Mr. Joe Ayala. And to my left, we have um, Vice President, Mrs. Nancy O'Kelly. Here. Um, to my other right, we have uh, student board member, uh, Mar Marisol Angulo. Angulo. Here. And to my other left, we have uh, board clerk, Mrs. Dina Walker. Here. Do you have someone for the pledge? Um, Mrs. Angulo, do you, did you have somebody for the pledge? For the pledge of the, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Place your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you, Marisol. Thanks, <coughs> Mr. Islam, would you like to give the report out of closed session? Thank you, President Montes. Um, in closed session, the Board of Education ratified the acceptance of the resignation of certified uh, employee number 13839115 effective January 16, 2015. The roll call vote was 5-0. In closed sessions, Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Jeanette Martinez as Assistant Principal Carter High School, effective date uh, to be determined. The roll call vote was 5-0. In closed sessions, the Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Ines James as assistant principal, Carter High School, effective January 22nd, 2015. The roll call vote was 5-0. In closed sessions, the Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Eric uh, Sizzler, Sessler? Sessler. Sessler, I'm sorry. <laughs> as elementary principal, Casey Elementary School, effective January 10, 2015. The roll call vote was 5-0. In closed sessions, the Board of Education accepted the administrative appointment of Elonda Jackson as elementary principal, Fitzgerald Elementary School, effective February 2nd, 2015. The roll call vote was 5-0. That's all. Thank you. Can the new appointees come up and meet the board? So with that, um, do we have a motion to adjourn closed session? So moved. A second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next we have the adoption of the agenda. And um, an item has come forward uh, to me uh, to make a an amendment or uh, correct a typo uh, 
and that's for item reference uh, KF.1, and that's the memorandum of understanding with the city of Rialto for safety resource officers. Uh, down in the third paragraph, uh, it states a date of June 30th, 2017, uh, which should actually, in fact, be June 30th, 2015. So uh, I make a motion that we make the correction. What? Uh, Mr. Montes, is K5.1. That's what I said. We said F.1. Oh, did I? Yeah. I'm going I'm to look at the recording and check that out. <laughs> K5.1, Memorandum of Understanding the City of Rialto for Safety Resource Officers. And that's basically the, the date um, beginning February 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2015, not 2017. Okay. So do we have a second to change the item? I move, uh, move and second to change the actual date um, from June 30th, 2015, uh, 2017 to June 30th, 2017, uh, 2015. Okay, uh, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye, but I, I want to uh, point out third paragraph down, one, two, three, four, five, the sixth line in the middle of the, Jenny. of it it says 2016 and 17 school years. So we need to strike that as well? No, that that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> okay, sorry. So with that, um, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Do we have discussion? Not much to discuss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we'll begin with our presentations. Um, Marisol, would you like to do us the honors? Sure. Good evening, everyone. Our first presenter is from Carter High School, Karen Bustamante. Good evening, honorable board members, interim <coughs> superintendent, Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. My name is Karen Bustamante, and I'm the student representative at Carter High School. The new year has started, and we've kicked it off at a good start at Carter. We had our very first ever senior sunrise on January 9th to unite all of our seniors on that beautiful Friday morning. We had donuts for everyone and amazing music. Another thing, uh, our Another dance is coming up on our way, and, and it's in our uh, NPR. It's our winter semi-formal. The, the, the theme is fire and ice, and it will be held on February 13th. Don't worry, we're making sure to give the boys the spotlight on the throne that night, as it is only our king's court. Also, our winter blood drive is this Friday in the Carter Gym. We hope to see 400 students walk through those doors to help save a life. And to conclude, I also met the mayor last Wednesday. I took a picture with her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Our next presenter is Janae Wilson from Eisenhower High School. Good evening, honorable board members, interim superintendent, Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. I am Janae Wilson, ASB president at Eisenhower High School. Currently at Eisenhower, we have been supporting our winter sports team. Our girls basketball team is currently undefeated, and as of yesterday, they are, they are now ranked number one in their league and number three in the San Bernardino Sun rankings. Oh. We are so proud of our team and are excited as they continue on, on with their second round in playoffs next week. This month, we also hosted a senior dinner where we informed seniors of senior events and topped off the night with karaoke and unlimited tacos. Mm -hmm. We would love if the board would come and join us Friday, January 30th at 4 p.m. in our cafeteria for our talent show themed Ike's Great and Talented. We host this to discover what unknown talent we have hidden in our nest. Our next big event after that is our winter formal themed Emerald City. 
We are currently having a blowout sale for our winter formal tickets, which puts them at their lowest price of the year at $25 until Friday. Our winter formal will be held on Valentine's Day from 7 p.m. through 11 p.m., where we will also have unlimited tacos and an overall amazing time. Everyone at Eisenhower would like to thank the board for their unanimous decision to follow through with the construction of our stadium and fine arts building. Although I will be a graduate by the time the stadium is built, I am excited to return to Eisenhower as an alumni to see how our facilities at Eisenhower have improved. Ike is filled with school spirit and continues to grow, learn, and celebrate as one united campus. Thank you for your time. Our final speaker is Edward Ortiz from Rialto High School. Good evening, Honorable Board of Education, Interim Superintendent, Mr. Islam, and viewing audience. My name is Edward Ortiz, and I'm the proud ASB Ambassador for Rialto High School. And in honor of January, I would like to personally wish you all a happy new year. And because we, not, we cannot be together to celebrate it then, we can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of celebrations, Rialto High School will be hosting our annual Winter Pep Rally this Friday. We'll be honoring our soccer, basketball, and wrestling athletes who have made it their goal to score and pin every team the Rialto Knights face this season. Get it? Goal. Soccer. Score. Basketball. Pin. You know. <laughs> but I digress. The theme for our rally is a new year in New York. And let me tell you, Times Square has nothing on a big reveal we have in store for our Knights. We will divulge this year's prom theme and location. Everybody has been trying to pry it out of me. Stop. Not you guys, too. These lips are made of iron. After <laughs> all, I am a knight. <laughs> but if you stop by the pep rally, you will have all the answers you seek. This Friday, 1030 in the Rialto Gym. <laughs> and the celebration continues into Friday night with the epic alliance of Rialto's ASB and the Women's Empowerment Club. Go ladies. Who join forces to bring the first ever celebration dance to Rialto High. Tickets are now on sale. Consider this a personal invite to join us. But I must warn you, there could be a dance off. No pressure. Might be adding a twist to it and partnering up. How about it, Lady O'Kelly? You and me. <laughs> we got that. <laughs> and to honor brevity, we have our spring blood drive coming up later this month. We had a huge turnout for our financial aid workshop this past week, and our Broadway nights are currently in rehearsal for our spring production of Grease. And in the same vein as summer nights, I wish you all a good night, and thank you for your time and support. Have a safe drive home, everybody. <laughs> presentation. Thank you, Mrs. Mirtha Angulo. <coughs> Next up, we have a presentation by Vicente Lloyd and Stutzman LLP regarding the fiscal year 2013-2014 annual audited financial report. Listen, Montez, uh, we have a partner from uh, uh, the audit firm is here to present uh, um, our annual uh, financial audit report. Uh, you as a board, you're accepting the report. Uh, the report has been officially filed by December 15 deadline, which is required by the state. So tonight you are accepting the report and they will go over a quick overview of the report. Uh, the presenter is Tina Hanton and her uh, staff is here. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much for having us here. Uh, as Mr. Islam has said, my name is Tina Henton and I am a partner with Vicente Lloyd and Stutzman. I have with me tonight Priscilla Osborne Flores, who is our senior manager and uh, <coughs> worked on this on your audit also. Uh, this is our first year of auditing for Rialto Unified and uh, I am here tonight simply to give you a, a quick overview of the results of the audit. This is quite an extensive process that, as uh, also as Mr. Islam mentioned, is required by the state of California. And it really does span almost an entire fiscal year, our entire calendar year as we complete the audit as it's due by December 15th. And we begin very early in the year. It is very comprehensive. We, we review all of the funds under the district's control. That includes everything from your bond funds, your associated student body funds, uh, your attendance, and we are also required to review many elements of both federal and state compliance, so there are additional procedures there as well. And as part of that audit, 
uh, we are required to issue opinions on the financial statements, which is the primary purpose of the audit. And we are happy to report that we have issued unmodified opinions on your financial statements, your federal compliance, and your state compliance. What that means is, that means that you have followed all required accounting principles and you've included all required disclosures in the amounts that are included here are fairly stated. Um, it also means from a compliance standpoint that you have materially complied with the, comp with the requirements of each of the programs that we review. Uh, we did have many changes in state compliance this year. The, the uh, Education Audit Appeals Panel was very busy, so we had new steps that we performed related to the local controlled funding formula, common core, unduplicated counts, and your Prop 39 clean energy. And so we were uh, said doing a lot of new steps this year, so many new programs were being reviewed. We also, as part of your federal audit, we review certain programs based on a, on a risk basis. This year we audited three programs and those covered roughly 78% of all of your federal expenditures, so quite a high percentage of federal programs as well. Wh uh, which three programs were those, I'm sorry? Uh, they were uh, the Child Nutrition Cluster, Title I, and um, Title Three were the three that we looked mm. at this year. And uh, also, uh, on page 59 is another helpful page. That's just your general trends and analysis page. And that shows the summary of results from the general fund for the current year, the two prior years, and the budget year, which is the 14-15 year. Mm -hmm. And it also shows your required reserves, which you have met each year at 3%. So um, that's just a helpful page to kind of see the performance of the general fund over time. Uh, w there were five audit findings, four related to internal controls and one related to state compliance. Uh, each of those findings includes management's response, so you can see how management is responding to them. And uh, like I said, I know that there have been already, they've been busy working on those findings already. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did have one prior year finding that we also report on, and that one has been partially implemented so there's definitely been progress made and they are, the, the current finding is also in the report. So, and that's really the summary. I wasn't gonna go into too much detail, but rather Priscilla and I would just be available to answer any questions that you might have had. Question uh, on the reserves. Uh, it, before it was 3%, correct? Mm -hmm. So that hasn't changed. Uh, there was a time that it was allowed to be lower, but statutorily it's always been 3% and it continues to be that. Okay, and, I, and it looks like uh, w we were up there at CSBA and there might be recommendations uh, statewide to make sure it doesn't go below that because, you know, unforeseen problems and all of a sudden you have negative reports that you have to file, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Okay, just want to bring that up, thank you. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have any uh, questions or comments? Uh, question. And this really is uh, just rhetorical. Um, in regard to borrowing, interfund borrowing, or um, borrowing to cover salaries, uh, I just want to hear what your response is. Are we the only district who has to do that? I, I know the answer, but I want the public to hear it from you. I I honestly do not know the answer to that question. Okay. I'm sure you're not, but I do not know the answer to that question. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, may I uh, answer to this, uh, uh, Mr. Martinez? Uh, as governor uh, released his plan for next year uh, with the um, LCFF funding, uh, governor tried to eliminate deferral. You're referring to deferral, which is leading to us borrowing cash. Correct. Because the state not paying um, uh, timely, the yes. timely, and we have to borrow that. Uh, so that uh, with the uh, with the um, proposition thirty really help us get more funding. And with the LCFF, the governor's plan to eliminate one hundred percent deferral beginning next fiscal year. Great news! Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you mentioned in the beginning that uh, you you found that our district's been in compliance on all levels. Correct. Uh, we have issued unmodified opinions on compliance. That is correct. Okay. Now we've heard that before. 
and <laughs> and and it wasn't necessarily always the case. We just want you to know that uh, we welcome you here. Uh, we know it's your first year here. Um, you guys came in through a uh, strong recommendation, and um, and uh, just know that you know we're watching. Uh, you guys are supposed to be watching our finances, but we're also watching to make sure you know that um, you guys are doing the best and what's in the best interest of this district. So if any problems do arise, any questionable things uh, are found, uh, share it with the board also, uh, not just with the staff, but also with the board. So anybody else? Thank you very much and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Mr. Islam, on number three, um, we have a recognition of new appointment. Yes. Um, would you like to, would you like to? Yes, uh, President Montez, uh, we have uh, at the last board, board meeting, you appointed our Senior Director of Student Services, uh, Angela uh, Brantley. She's here today with her family. I think her son is here. Can we recognize and, and have, have Angela just Shake hand with the board. If you please come forward. <laughs> Next, we have number four uh, leadership associates. Superintendent search process and timelines presentation. Thank you very much, uh, President Montez and members of the board. Um, welcome, leadership associates, and we're, we think of ourselves as the premier executive search firm in California. We do about 50% of the searches in California. Um, we are comprised of 11 superintendents, all successful superintendents. We're actually partial to <laughs> and I was the former superintendent of, of Fullerton and Glendale. So good evening. We're delighted to be with you and uh, very pleased to participate in the process for the uh, search for the new superintendent of Rialto. Rialto is a district that has enormous potential and uh, we look forward to working with you uh, and look forward to working uh, with the community and the employee group to identify the kind of superintendent and characteristics, personal professional desire to be that superintendent. If I could just uh, stop you for a second. Um, we need to get a microphone over your table, unless you guys would like to um, stand. stand for the podium, only because on th the televised meeting, um, <laughs> if it's not said through the microphone, they can't. Can you, do you have a way to move the microphone to their table? We have a, we yeah. have a handset. Oh. Yeah. That was our mistake, so give us a second. Now, we're not going to make you repeat everything you already said, but we can at least hear the rest of it. As a former high school principal, I, I never had any problem having people hear me. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sure everyone can hear you in the room. But we have an overflow room and then the people watching at home. Thank you. Okay. Can we have John? <coughs> Good. 
So what I'd like to do is uh, we want to do a number of things this evening. We would like to provide you uh, with an overview of the search process. It's an eight-step process. Um, as uh, Mike mentioned, we'd like to solicit some information from you about uh, what you as a board are looking for in the next superintendent. We'd like to identify the community groups and the various groups w within the district that you'd like us to uh, contact to solicit feedback. And then we'd like to finalize a timeline for the search, uh, which includes uh, both a, a community input day, uh, the closing date, but most importantly for the board, uh, the candidate review uh, session and the interview uh, timeline. Uh, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about the search. It's, a, it's an eight-step process. The first step is our initial meeting with you uh, this evening. And this is really an overview of the search. It's also to solicit uh, information from you on the des desired characteristics of your next superintendent personally and professionally, and it's to finalize the timeline. The second step would be uh, community input uh, sessions. Uh, we would identify with your assistants and your staff's assistants um, all of the various groups that uh, you would like us to talk with. And uh, Mike and I will be in the district um, as needed to uh, meet face to face with these groups, to talk with them about what they're looking for in the next superintendent, what they desire. Uh, also, uh, to identify the characteristics, the strengths of the district, and some of the challenges that the district is facing. Um, all of this information will be compiled and ultimately uh, given to you as a board. It's very useful information for you. It gives you um, an unfiltered uh, view of what your community and employees think about the district and the process. In addition to the community uh, input uh, sessions, uh, uh, we will uh, work with your staff to attach an online survey, both in English and in Spanish, to your website. And we encourage you as a board, we encourage the community, uh, each of the school site principals to um, uh, put the word out that we would like to have as much feedback and as much input uh, through this survey as possible. Uh, the survey, uh, again, kind of goes through some of the similar type questions, uh, characteristics, desires, uh, that sort of thing in the next superintendent. But it's another way to reach the public. The more uh, information we receive, uh, the better uh, for us to identify and recruit the type of candidate that fits uh, for the district. Um, and uh, quite honestly, the more feedback uh, we receive, the better for you as a board, uh, because this is very valuable input uh, for you. Uh, with the input received, we develop a position description, which really identifies uh, what the next superintendent should be. And uh, candidates who are interested in your position I really want to know about Rialto. What are the strengths? What are the challenges? What are the characteristics that uh, folks are looking for? Uh, what do you want in your next superintendent? And we really tailor that to the district. Uh, these positions are uh, high level uh, uh, positions, uh, but we're not just looking for a competent person. We're looking for a competent person uh, who has the values and the characteristics that are needed for Rialto in particular. So a candidate that might be uh, interested in a, another district may not be the right fit for a district like Rialto. You want the perfect person for this district. <coughs> then we will advertise. Uh, we'll advertise statewide. Uh, we'll begin next week uh, with the advertising uh, process at the uh, uh, statewide superintendent symposium. Uh, we'll also advertise in uh, publications. And then we'll uh, begin to recruit. We don't wait for people to apply for the position. We will actually tap people on the shoulder, people that may not think about Rialto, but when we talk about the opportunity and some of the challenges uh, that um, they would have the opportunity to participate in, uh, we get them to begin to think about what it would be like to be superintendent in Rialto. And uh, so the, it's just not an open application process. There's a si significant amount of recruiting that goes uh, along with that. Uh, once the position closes, uh, you as a board will meet uh, in a closed session, and you'll have the opportunity to see each and every candidate. Everyone who applies for the position, uh, you will have the opportunity to take a look at. And we will walk through each candidate uh, with you. 
Um, we will vet um, and uh, do background checks on every candidate. And so you will know from that group, uh, the, you'll whittle that group down to the number of candidates that you'd like to uh, interview. Then we'll have the interview date or dates where you have the opportunity to interview the, uh, can all the candidates and then you will have the um, opportunity to then uh, re-interview and possibly re-interview again the final candidate for your selection. Once you have that, you've selected a final candidate, but you haven't selected the superintendent yet because we encourage you as a board to not just base your decision on the interview, but to actually go to the uh, site where that person is currently employed and visit that uh, person's uh, district uh, or, or work site, uh, talk with people about the person to do some checks on your own uh, uh, in conjunction of that person's school site or district site. And then we go through the uh, contract negotiation and finalize uh, the uh, contract for that person and then ultimately you approve that person in a public meeting uh, similar uh, to this um, and uh, that's ended, you end the process <laughs> there and then you have a welcome reception where obviously the community and the board and the staff will uh, welcome the community to the district as the next superintendent. So that's a kind of a Reader's Digest version of the process. It's a very thorough process. It's very much tailored to you as a board. This is your uh, process. Uh, we work at the uh, <coughs> with you 100% uh, all the way. Uh, you will make the final selection. Uh, our job is to bring you uh, qualified candidates who are uh, vetted and well positioned to lead the district uh, here. So that's overview of the process. So I think at this point in time, if, if you have any quick questions, we'd be happy to ask, answer any questions. Otherwise, uh, President Montes, if, if you could have each of the board members share a little bit about their perception of what they would like in a new superintendent, we'll take notes and we'll begin the process of building that profile of what your new superintendent should come with as far as characteristics, skills, background, training. Well, um, would anybody like to go first? Mrs. O'Kelly, Vice President O'Kelly. Can we do paper, rock, scissors, or <laughs> <laughs> rock, paper? Uh, I wrote down. I wrote down several thoughts, um, things that to me are very important. And I have to say, number one, absolutely, for our district, this person has to be honest. He has to have integrity. He, she. I'm sorry. Don't mean to sound sexist. Um, um, ethical, trustworthy, a person that can build trust, and must be humble. Uh, also, the person must um, have a commitment to excellence and equity and an urgency for imp improving educational opportunities and attainment for all students. Must be an advocate for all children who will make decisions always in the best interests of the children. Uh, must be an ex have excellent communication skills. Effective, strong communication skills are essential to effective uh, leadership and effective uh, teaching and everything else. So effective, he must be an effective, he or she. Um, <coughs> must be have a history of positive work relationships with staff uh, students parents unions and all other stakeholders uh, and must have strong leadership skills must be decisive must hold people accountable and must rely on hard data when making decisions and implementing uh, uh, oh, wait a minute. implementing programs and plans um, and accountability systems for the academic personnel and fiscal operations. Must have a degree of fiscal knowledge and ex expertise. And I think I have others, but my last one here would be, would be must be visible and actively engaged in the school and community. Schools, plural, I'm sorry. 
you guys get all that? <laughs> okay. Um, and, and you can e you you'll be able to email that <laughs> list to me or provide that. List to me well. Okay. <laughs> I, I, we don't want nothing. We just want them to be able to walk on water. <laughs> That's um, right. M Mrs. Walker, would you like to share? So, uh, thankfully, uh, my, my counterpart nailed almost everything that we've talked about, and, and we want to see. Uh, one of the things I would like to emphasize, though, is we definitely need a transformational leader uh, for this district mm -hmm. to really to understand that we have been in a season of turmoil here uh, for many different factors and reasons, but we're ready to heal and we're ready to move on. And they have to really have that vision of being able to take this district from where we are now to the excellence that we envision not only for ourselves as, as, as uh, leaders of our, our board, but also for our students in our district and for our staff in our district as well, because we want this to be the best place to work, to mm -hmm. learn, and to live. And that means this leader as well has to be able to be a partner in the city, uh, in our com surrounding community as well. So I am very much looking for all the attributes that uh, Ms. O'Kelly uh, reiterated, but also to say that they need to be able to partner and to reach out to our business community, uh, to our city leaders as well, because this job does not get done by one entity. Uh, and that we know that partnerships are needed to make sure that our students are excelling at the level that we expect and far beyond, and that we're competing on a national and even international level with other students. Right. Uh, so that is the leader that I'm looking for. Mr. Martinez. Thank you, President Montez. Um, this leader, 70% of our, our uh, community is Spanish speaking. So they would have to be a Spanish speaker. Um, they covered a couple of points for me, the ladies did. They have to have a history of student achievement, and I define positive change defined as student achievement. They have to be uh, able to give me a history of turning a district around academically. having to read what got checked off here, so excuse me. They have to uh, demonstrate knowledge of technology and have a vision for STEM, have a vision for the district's future. And many times the decision comes down to um, academics or cost. They're going to have to tell me how they make that decision. Because for me, when it comes down to students, that's the bottom line mm -hmm. at all costs. And really, that's it. I do have one particular question for you if you'd be willing to answer it, or should I hold could on? I, uh, no, we'll answer that. But uh, could I also clarify one of your Certainly. comments? Your comment frequently, we will put on the profile that. You know, bilingual skills are highly desirable. Mm -hmm. They're desirable, but you said absolutely, it seems like you were saying absolutely necessary. If it came down to two individuals, one was desirable and one just flat knew how to speak Spanish, yeah. that would be a game changer for the community. Not okay. necessarily the board, but the community has an expectation of having a Spanish speaker. Uh, uh, I don't Ma believe Ma it's Ma mandatory that it Ma be bilingual. Desirable. High yeah, it's highly, highly desirable. desirable. Yeah. Highly and you had a question. Uh, the question would be, um, you kind of answered it, we will have information on the website. Correct. But not all parents have access to a, a computer yeah. or, or transportation to get to the district or to the library to use a computer. So how do parents vent their concerns um, or their priorities? Um, how do they add them to the list of boards? We've had s districts where there were issues similar to that, and most mm -hmm. of the time people were able to get to schools to have access through their computer labs. That okay. has traditionally been the way that we've done that. Okay, so we need to make sure that, uh, that we, we have computers available to students. Yeah. Uh, and to parents we'll, we'll also work with the principals to, um, for those that may be missed or may not be as comfortable talking with us, but may be more comfortable talking with principals, uh, we'll work Absolutely. with them on a kind of a template as well. Thank you. Yeah. We're very 
comfortable with taking input any way that it comes. I mean, and there are times that we will provide phone numbers if that's necessary, whatever okay. it is. If the principal gave me a handful of phone numbers and said, could you speak to these parents, I would speak to those parents. Thank you. Mr. Ayala. Thank you, President Montes. I'd like to start by first saying what family means to me. It's very, very important. It's one of the areas of my life that I cherish the most. And uh, it pains me when I find out that even when our kids graduate and they do well, they have great grades, that they look around in our community and um, they can't really uh, apply those grades anywhere because the opportunities aren't here. So that gives them, you know, options like, well, if I can't find work here, then I have to leave my family and go somewhere else. And that, that's painstaking when I hear that. Uh, I know there's superstars out there. If Bill Gates came through the door right now, how much would he be worth? What would we be willing to pay him for his services? He's, a, he's definitely got a proven record, richest man in the world. Now, is it money that we're looking for? Is it opportunities? You know, we're a diverse community here, cultural diverse community with, with special needs. It is a great place to live. Uh, you know, I, I'm happy I, I chose this area. Uh, whoever we select, I, I hope he, he doesn't have to be the straight A student, okay? I mean, it'd be nice to have Bill Gates. But when you think of the Army model, the straight A students up at Cal State uh, University, that's not who they're looking for. They need somebody with uh, uh, emotional intelligence mm -hmm. who's well-rounded, mm -hmm. who knows how to deal with all the stakeholders because everybody counts. You know, I look at our mission statement here and we want to provide opportunities to inspire all our kids. Programs like Link Learning is one of those programs. It may not give us the high API scores, but it's going to keep Johnny engaged. So that individual who is well-rounded and has a heart and is connected, knows how to treat people, knows how to talk to people, knows how to put up fires, and return a phone call means a lot. So I hope we can find that individual. And yes, we may decide that it might be expensive, but you know, if he does the right thing for this community, then we have to evaluate whether or not we made the right decision. Thank you. Chair, do you have any questions for Mr. Yellow? No? All right. Well, I guess last but not least, um, I, I just would like to share a few things. And um, and I, I agree with Mrs. O'Kelly. I think it'd be nice if uh, the new superintendent could can walk on water. Um, <laughs> But uh, if they can't, we want to hold it against them. Um, but I do want to say that I, I do believe that um, uh, being uh, multilingual, uh, bi whether it's bilingual, trilingual, or you know, more than uh, than that, I, I think it's always a, a plus and a benefit. But I wouldn't say that uh, it would have to be a deal breaker. It would have to be an absolutely mandatory. Uh, thing a at least from my perspective um, I think there's many people out there that are monolingual in and out of our district that that do an awesome job at what they do and, and I believe that if our next superintendent permanent superintendent is uh, monolingual uh, only um, uh, as long as they have a good heart as long as they have a, um, a desire to really do what's in the best interest of this community, of these kids, uh, of the RUSD family, um, I'll be okay uh, with it, uh, you know, even if they only speak one language. But I do believe they should at least have bilingual business cards. Um, <laughs> if they, if they, uh, if they can't, you know, if they, <laughs> if they can't. Uh, That's an inside joke. Um, <laughs> You know, and and um, and 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 I think um, it, it's important to get not just the feedback from the board, and, and and I appreciate you guys giving us a presentation. I'm very impressed um, with your your level of expertise. 
um, uh, you know, uh, 300 plus searches uh, over the last 30 years, uh, you know, comes out to about what, 10 searches a year. Um, you know, so 50% of all the searches in the state is, is very, very commendable amount of uh, searches that you guys do. So we do, I think that's one of the main factors you were chosen is the level of expertise and experience that you guys are able to provide. Um, the fact that all of your uh, staff members are all partners. Um, you don't have one particular owner, you know, you, you it's, it's uh, you guys are all owners. You're all experienced, proven superintendents. So um, you guys better than us uh, have, you know, uh, after you get done hearing from us and from the community, we'll have a better understanding of what this district needs. Um, it doesn't mean we want you guys to apply, you know, because <laughs> we know you guys are retired and whatnot, but, but being superintendents all yourselves, you know, we really, really will be counting uh, tremendously on, uh, on your recommendations, on your uh, uh, expertise, and, um, and, and, and combined with the consideration of this community's wants and needs and the board's wants and needs. Um, one of the biggest thing I, I, I think that um, uh, the permanent superintendent, he or she, um, uh, should be able to 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 do is uh, not just lead uh, this district, but also be able to follow. Um, uh, there's different types of leadership. There's hard-nosed leadership. There's uh, you know stubborn leadership. There's uh, good-hearted leadership, and you know, and there's weak leadership. Uh, but um, I, I think humble leadership is important, you know, and, and, uh, and being able to, to know uh, when not just to lead but to follow. Uh, um, and we don't want someone that's just going to be a follower. You know, we, we do want a leader, but we do want someone that will be able to listen to the recommendations of the cabinet, of the staff, of the administration, the teachers, certified, uh, certificated and certified employees, um, someone that uh, will listen to uh, the parents, the students, uh, everyone in general. Um, I, I think it would be unfair uh, for us to get someone that's going to be only pro, you know, pro one group. Um, we need someone that's going to be pro everybody. We want someone that's going to be inclusive mm -hmm. and try to bring everyone together, uh, not exclusive and, you know, thumb their nose at, uh, you know, the city leadership or anybody else. Um, we've got a lot of work to do. You, you obviously, you're aware of uh, many of the challenges that we're, we've, we've faced in the past and we're uh, healing from and, and continuing to face. Um, but in the end, I just want to make sure we get a person with a really big heart, um, you know, um, <laughs> and it doesn't hurt, you know, to have a really big brain too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> with, with that, um, I think it'd be good to hear from our student board member, um, you know, about a few things. Uh, Absolutely, she thinks would be good and the next permanent superintendent. Personally, I believe that the sup um, our next superintendent should honestly just mainly have the best interest in the students mm -hmm. overall. Honestly, what I do yeah. think. Thank you. I know you presented uh, the eight points that you were going to cover, but uh, I'm sure the public would love to hear about the timeline, and uh, in particular, you know, the starting date and so forth. It's on page five of what you gave to the board. Yeah. We, we've already begun the process of looking at calendars and trying to find availability and so forth. And we wanted to provide enough time to get advertisement and notification out for the very first, that community meeting day. So uh, looking at our calendars, we had selected February 10th. Now that doesn't necessarily involve you because you wouldn't be at those events, mm -hmm. but I think that gives you enough time to do, to allow staff to do the planning. And we'll talk the next part, we'll talk a little bit about the, the who you want us to talk to as, as part of the process, but 
uh, do you see any reason or any concern about that particular date? February 10th. Uh, uh, what day of the week is that? Tuesday. 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 On the Tuesday. It, I would be more concerned with the staff, I'm sure, moving ahead in a timely manner is what the board and community would want. Our staff has to be able to meet that. Do you see any problem with that? <coughs> no. Okay. okay. What, 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 is, uh, what time again? It would be all day. We would be here all day as part of that process. We'll lay that day out. We just want to establish the day and then would, we'll work on the timeline. Would, would, uh, would a minimum day be better? Um, for staff, since some schools since some schools uh, are out early on minimum days, we wouldn't need that right now. Okay. So we're, 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 we'll work through that day. We just want to hollow out that one day so that we can start putting things in. Okay. Okay. And then we we're looking at the next day that we're looking at is how much time we need to do recruitment and basically advertise and go through the process. So. Right now, we tentatively had selected March 16th as a date. And that's the date the position would close. Okay. 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 So the position closes March 16th. That's a Monday. We always try to do it after a Monday so that people need, and it's usually 5 o'clock <coughs> in the afternoon. So it would be 5 o'clock in the afternoon on the on on that March 16th, a Monday, so they okay. had the weekend to get done whatever they needed to get done. It's all done online, by the way. Mm. We, we, the application process and all the documents are created as a group and put together, and then they send it to our office. All the, all the paperwork as part of the process won't necessarily, will not go through your, your HR office. Mm -hmm. It will go through our office. Now, the next two dates are Im really important to you because those are dates that you need to make sure you are available. So those dates are the first one is a date for us to actually present the candidates. They're all their paperwork. So it's a day that we'll probably need about three hours of time. And we said, Right now, we're looking at April 8th. But <coughs> that date is predicated on your schedules. And so um, do you have calendars uh, available to check, or do you need to get back to us on that? What day of the back. week is it? April 8th is a Wednesday. And so it's not a board meeting day, right? It is. Oh, yeah. that might not be good. So if that's so, if we can work around that, if Sixth well, or seventh is open. Sixth and seventh is open. Is that okay for you? I think Monday, that Tuesday. is. Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Sixth or seventh. Monday, yeah. Monday. Sixth yeah. is, six is fine. Monday. Yeah. Okay, so it'd be April the sixth. It'd be April the sixth. So that would be the day that we would go over all the applications, and you would make the final decision. This is your process. We're just facilitating it. Uh, you'll make the selection of who you will be interviewing. So then we need a little bit of time to notify the candidates and make sure that everything is put in place for the final interview process. So right now we had selected, um, was it 13? No, 13, 14. So uh, taking a look at your calendars again, and this is subject to your availability. <laughs> Um, what do uh, April 14 and 15 look like as potential interview dates? What day of the week? Those, Those are Tuesday, Wednesday. 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 Wednesday's all right. Wednesday's good. Is so it most likely it's a one-day process, but we ask that you reserve the second day in case we need the second day. Mm -hmm. So, so it's Tuesday, 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 Tuesday and Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. The 14th, my and 15th. 14th and 15th. I typically babysit my grandson two days a week, but that mo that her, his mother is having another baby and will be on maternity leave then, so okay. I'm free. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday's not a good day, um, but Wednesday's all right. <coughs> okay. 
I've, I've got the 14th and the 15th. Is that Tuesday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Tuesday Thursday? And Wednesday. Oh, and Wednesday that's Wednesday okay Wednesday with me. Day. How about 15th. 16 or 17? 16 is all right. It'll be a Wednesday, Thursday. That's all right. I'm, I'm I, good I can't do Thursday. That okay. Friday? Friday's not a good day. How about so a Monday and a Wednesday? Most likely, then, we can get it done <coughs> on Wednesday the 15th. Okay. 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 Tax day. Should we need? Yeah. Should we need to go over? Usually, it's just the morning. Okay. Okay. That's needed. So does that date work for everyone? Wednesday the fifteenth. April the fifteenth. As far as I know, I don't have my calendar. So. Your tax is <laughs> done early. I'm winging it. <laughs> oh, I don't want. I, I mean, I, I would suggest we just schedule it, and then if if yeah. if any if anything else, yeah. um, we'll have a chance we'll, tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, we'll modify it. Mm -hmm. um, Otherwise, everyone's going to know what we, all the things we have to do, those dates. <laughs> okay, so we're good on dates. So the next part of the process we'd really like to do, and I'll spend a couple minutes, <coughs> is, is talk about those organizations that you want to make sure we contact as part of the process to gather input from. Yeah, well, we definitely want you to uh, speak with uh, our union reps union representatives, uh, our union membership, uh, the district's unions, uh, both uh, REA and uh, CSEA. Parents. Do you have any other unique committees like your DLAC? That do you have a bond committee? Yes, um, mm -hmm. Measure Y. Th there's, there's also another uh, union, uh, and that would be the Substitute Teachers Union. CWA. Yeah. 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 Communi Communication yeah. Workers, Workers of America. America. CWA. Substeachers Union. Yes. Okay. We have a parent Same university. Union. If uh, you, know, you can combine group. them, invite them to DLAC. The parents and that's so what we do sometimes. Yeah, the parent mm -hmm. university. Yeah. Yeah. But we have a Measure Y bond committee. We also have a Measure Y steering committee. Okay. So... Mm -hmm. The uh, maybe maybe superintendent's maybe advisory council. We maybe uh, one with all the principals. Yeah, yeah, you definitely yeah, need we will to. Definitely meet with the principals. And our admins have and a the group teachers as well. We, it's not an association as as a union, RSM. but it is RSM. Yes, yes. Our safety and security department. Mm -hmm. Okay. We still have your DSAC students. The DSAC mm -hmm. students may be mm -hmm. with them. Input as to how the schools have been participating, Absolutely. and let's not forget the uh, there's there's a lot of groups. The nutritional services. Okay. The mm -hmm. uh, the special ed department has been a very challenging area to special take care education. of their needs. That that mm -hmm. that's an area that that's a, I think a, a high priority. We need to find ways to, there's a to help them meet their needs. Special ed task force well, in place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have Do you have a um, a student Council group that comprised of all the no each yeah. well DSAC but the student advisory DSAC. committee yeah, that's yeah. all okay. ASB some of the leadership uh, that's a good start that's a good mm -hmm. start you get mm -hmm. good we representation do that early there. in the morning so mm -hmm. we can yes. get back to school they, we have that at the middle and high school levels okay. cool. and of course all the administrators and district mm -hmm. administrators and site administrators and teachers and Secretaries, I mean, just everybody. It's, it's, that's, you've been down that road before. Both of you have, so you know what we're saying. We want ev everybody to have input that wants input. Absolutely. It's not an easy uh, process. Totally inclusive. How about city groups? Um, oh, clubs, talk to Rialto council. PD, yeah. Rialto Fire. Mm -hmm. We usually do a city meeting. And maybe yeah, Kiwanis. Nice. Yeah, that's Ka Kiwanis. Yeah, yeah okay. Mm -hmm. And church groups and we'll do a service club <coughs> see it okay. would be bad to get some feedback from our mayor and city council members yeah. right as mm -hmm. part of the city group that's yeah. traditionally what we're doing good yeah. how about are there any <coughs> community colleges that that you have a close working relationship you know san bernardino san bernardino uh, valley valley college if we yeah. get some input Cal there san we're going to be very we'll advisable mm -hmm. okay. yeah they're they're mm -hmm. definitely a big key player in mm -hmm. helping us with our kids okay mm -hmm. And of course, the parents. I just hope we get a lot of parent participation in this. So, you, you, you're also more than welcome to, to uh, speak with the Sun newspaper. Okay, wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. 
He's right over there. <laughs> He's the quiet one. <laughs> So just, I, I want to reiterate uh, in our conversation a little earlier, for those of you who are listening or, or, or not a part of an organized group, um, they will be holding two meetings that will be forum. open forum, two community meetings that are open forum. So if you're not a part of any invited group, um, in the morning there will be a morning session and an evening session mm -hmm. as well. Um, and the district will work our very darndest. So you've got to get the word out too to help us in this because anyone is welcome to give input on those meetings. And so we invite you all and we're going to need your help to get that input so that we don't have the usual suspects in the room, but we have the people who are actually impacted the most right. um, by who our new leader will be. So just want to reiterate that. And we will mm -hmm. also advertise widely the link off of your site, your district site, that will allow them to Thank access you. the survey, online survey. Mm -hmm. And many people, many people prefer doing that where they can sit at home and be thoughtful mm -hmm. through the process. And it captures every comment. You'll, you'll get pages and pages mm -hmm. of comments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Good. We're used to pages and pages of comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the, the community groups, which we'll work with uh, Rosie and the staff on um, setting up a schedule. We have a tentative timeline. Uh, we have uh, the beginning stages of the characteristics. And so I think we're off to a very, very good start. Uh, we'll be in contact uh, with you. Uh, we'll. Um, Get your emails from uh, your interim superintendent, and uh, we'll email you uh, periodically uh, updates. Uh, if you have questions, we'll leave our cards with you, mm -hmm. and feel free to email us and contact us as well. This is your search. We want to emphasize that. Your search, we're going to help you facilitate it, and uh, we look forward to bringing some outstanding candidates uh, for you to consider. And one more thing the community is going to want to know, it's, it's down here. On July 1st, on page 5, it <laughs> says, new superintendent begins July 1st, July 2015. 1st. Mm -hmm. yep. That's a tentative date for the quiet newspaper man. <laughs> I'm gonna wake him up. Okay. So for those of you who do, uh, do have, uh, we still have uh, public comments, so if you have your, I saw a hand raised, just to, to make sure that you have a comment time. And um, our representatives will still be here as well, too. Thank you. Now, um, uh, are you guys planning on staying uh, for public comment? Some of our uh, people, in, in the, some of our people in the audience, uh, community members, parents, employees, will be addressing the board at the podium. Do you guys have some time to stay and listen in case anybody would like to comment? Good. Okay. Um, these numbers on page eight. So if we need to reach you for some reason, they're current. Current, correct. Okay, thank you. And you have our cards, correct? Okay. You don't have the no, we don't. We don't have the cards. <coughs> they're only in English. Oh, that's a big problem right there. I hope you guys brought a, a big stack of those because you might get jammed up for some of those. <laughs> Any more questions or comments? Okay, then with that, we'll go ahead and move on to <laughs> item C, public comments. Comments from the floor at this time. Any person wishing to speak on any, any item not on the agenda will be granted three minutes. And first we have Mrs. Linda Silva. Oh, okay. So we'll change it to on the agenda. It's okay. Um, I, I also wanted to uh, um, uh, let the public know that um, we uh, no longer will be placing a res time restriction on when you can have your 
time card turned in. As long as we haven't gotten to public comment yet, just like in many other school districts and cities, you can turn it in to uh, the executive secretary here for the board, uh, Mrs. Rosie Williams, um, and I will accept it. Uh, so you will no longer have to get here really, really early and, and uh, turn the slip card in at 646 and someone tell you, ah, you passed the 645 time limit. Um, so with that, if there's no more, no one else would like to submit a card, if you'd like to submit a card, please get one, fill it out. Um, and uh, as long as we're still on this item, I'll allow it. Um, um, Mr. So Montes, uh, we probably need to uh, review the board bylaws and make sure that that is updated then. I, I don't remember that being part of the board I'm bylaws. I'm not sure if it is or not. Uh, well, we'll look into it. So first, we have Mr. D Jack, Dr. Jack Poster. <coughs> good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, good evening. I am here this evening to have a summons and complaint served on Rialto Unified School District charging Rialto Unified School District with wrongful termination, fraud and wrongful termination, defamation of character, slander, intentional interference with prospective economic advantage, intentional infliction of severe emotional distress, punitive damages, and unlimited damages exceeding one million dollars and punitive damages <coughs> at some point in trial, <laughs> unspecified amount. The Rialto Unified School District systematically ruined my reputation, knowingly committed fraud, and destroyed my band program at Rialto High School. At one point, I begged this board to investigate further the charges against me. But this request went to deaf ears, even though 1,600 students, parents, staff and administrators from Rialto High School also beg them not to dismiss me. Have a nice day. Thank you, Dr. Poster. Next up we have Yolanda Jackson. Good evening. Uh, tonight I'm here to let the board and cabinet members know about our annual Z-Ray luncheon, which stands for Zetas Recognizing All Youth. This is our fifth year of hosting this event, and we started the event with students here in Rialto. Just to give you a little bit of information about it, we know that our high achieving students will always get recognized. Our event seeks to recognize those quiet heroes that do community service in their community or at their school, um, to recognize students who have um, turned it around, who have previously been not either not well in behavior, attendance, or grades, and they have turned it around and they have at least a 2.0 now. And then our third category, category is also students who are high achievers but that also do community service. Um, in the past, we've had um, some board members, our uh, uh, interim superintendent, to come to our luncheon. And I'm here tonight because I want to extend a personal invitation. Last year, I told you guys to save the date. It's Saturday, April 11th, and it will be at Central Park in Rancho Cucamonga. Um, since we started this event five years ago, um, in just Rialto, we have now added Fontana Unified, Etiwanda Unified, and Central School District. Last year we had 250 guests, and Rialto is near and dear to my heart, <laughs> and so I am appealing to our secondary uh, um, administrators and uh, cabinet members to please encourage your um, administrators and counselors to get the applications 
um, back to our organization, which is Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Um, I sent them out to the schools last week, so I'll be um, hounding them and asking them for those nominations. Um, because I am from Rialto, I want to make sure that we have more Rialto students at our event than any of the other students. Um, we also are looking for, if you can attend, we need sponsors to um, sponsor students. We don't charge students and one adult to come to the event because we want them to come get the recognition. And so we cover that cost. So um, if you have an organization that would like to sponsor kids, we also make sure that each child that's recognized gets a gift card from somewhere, whether it's movie tickets, Subway, Starbucks, something. So in addition to the medals and trophies that we give them, we give them uh, some type of a gift certificate. So we are also looking for nominations. I did send out a save the date and a letter, and I will um, make sure that you guys get the information and the invitation. So if you're going to attend this year, please RSVP. And thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Now for items on agenda, on the agenda. Ms. Mr. George Rivera. Good evening. Good evening, board members, uh, interim superintendent, uh, viewing audience. Uh, I am really, really, really happy to to talk today because I'm very, very optimistic. I'm very, very happy to see where the district is uh, versus where it was. Uh, I'm very happy to see that uh, parents are being listened to now. Way I in contrast with with uh, previous uh, administration. So I am very, very happy for that. I am. Um, um, I want to say that I am very proud of this community. Uh, a lot of the parents that have come up and and talked to to the su interim superintendent, to the board members, and that they've been listened to. That that is big. Everyone needs to understand that it is the parents and the students, and they need to be listened to, and they need to be taken into consideration for every decision that's made on their behalf. So um, um, want to, I guess if anyone could answer the question, uh, I, I think we're in a better place now. Uh, there's been leadership, uh, you know, moving this, uh, this process along, along, uh, along, and I know there's not just one person, but um, would like to get an answer for the, for the next question. Why is it that uh, a contract has not been extended to the interim superintendent as a superintendent? If anyone could answer, I'd appreciate it. Uh, uh, the reason why I raised my hands, thank you very much, because you read my mind. <laughs> you read my mind. I was going to ask uh, for, I guess, the company leadership associates. Um, there's two very important questions for me and for, I guess, a lot of the community members here. Uh, do you guys have any interest after your your fees that you get charged uh, to the district. Do you guys have any interest in, do you guys get any any percentages of the wages of the superintendents that you guys place? Second, second question would be, um, has any of the, of the superintendents you guys have, uh, have placed while you guys have been uh, hired uh, for, for the search for a superintendent for any, any, uh, any district? Has anyone been questionable? Has anyone been, I mean, based on your on the services that you guys provided to certain districts, has anyone been uh, uh, of those candidates that uh, you guys have placed in, you know, in those districts? Have they been accused of anything? Have they been uh, done any questionable actions? I know that it is not in, in your control. I know that, uh, but has any of that happened in the past? And with that. I uh, um, reserve my time. I mean, I'm sorry. I I'm done. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Th thank you, uh, Mr. Rivera. We appreciate it. Um, uh, those questions. Um, uh, Leadership Associates is welcome to give you a business card, um, and.
you'd like uh, to have a discussion with them uh, and answer your questions. Um, but we wouldn't want them to, you know, have to respond to those questions here in public. Um, the other thing is uh, we normally don't um, answer questions, uh, but I do want to answer one of your questions, um, and I think it's rightfully so that the community and the people of this district know. Uh, Mr. Islam, our interim superintendent, will be a candidate for this superintendent search. Um, and he has been encouraged uh, by uh, this board to apply and go through the process, uh, just like everyone else that will be applying um, to be as fair as possible to the process in general um, for the new superintendent, for the permanent superintendent. Um, so with that, um, and I do want to add that y you're correct. Many people do believe uh, he's doing a good job. Um, so thank you for that. And um, it must be a little awkward for Mr. Islam to, uh, uh, you know, to sit here while we're all discussing this and we're going through this process. But, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And we know that Mr. Il Islam has gotten us through some very tough times, through very challenging times, and all that will be in consideration uh, throughout this process. But the process has to be fair, uh, and it has to be free of any appearances of impropriety. And for that purpose, Mr. Islam will not have any involvement. Let's make it clear, Mr. Isla Islam will not have any involvement in the search process itself. He will be a candidate going through the process as a candidate. So uh, with that, let's go on to our next item. And we want to thank Leadership Associates. Uh, you're welcome to stay and join us um, for the rest of the meeting. But we probably have other, other things to do and other districts to help. So thank you very much for your presentation. Let's give them a round of applause. Next up, we have comments from Association uh, Executive Board members. And first, we'd like to call Rialto Education Association if they have any members that would like to uh, speak um, or not. Do, do we have anyone from REA that would like to speak? Okay, so I in case they do, uh, I will let them uh, come back. Um, next, we'll go to California School Employees Association, and we do have uh, Mrs. Linda Silva that would like to speak. Good evening, board members, m Mr. Islam, and other administrators and community. Um, this evening, um, oh, I'm Linda Silva, president of CSEA, but this evening I'm coming to praise the work of um, our classified electricians. Um, back in January on uh, this month, on the Sunday the 11th, we had an elementary school that was hit very hard with some severe vandalism, which I'm sure you're aware of. But I wanted to point out that it was our outstanding classified electricians that came to the rescue and had that school up and running for Monday morning when the kids came to school. Those um, three electricians, which I didn't get permission to use their full names, so I'm only gonna refer to them as Dave, Marcos, and Ed. Um, and they um, worked all night long from Sunday afternoon until 6.30, 7 o'clock the next day mm -hmm. to get that school up and running. And I also wanna give kudos to their supervisors um, Sean and Gary. So the reason I guess I'm here tonight is that when I hear that we have classified staff doing this kind of work, um, I would really like to ask this board that you start recognizing the efforts and outstanding performances of our classified employees, the way that administrators and teachers get recognized by you at meetings. It would be nice for the classified staff to be getting some sort of kudos for jobs like this that they have done and things that we do on a daily basis for the students and the teachers and the staff of this district. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Silva. Next up, uh, do we have anyone from Communication Workers of America?
Good evening, Mr. Montez, President and the Board, and Mr. Islam. My name is Ron Fletcher. I'm the Area Vice President for Substitute Teachers. Uh, I really appreciate you listening and putting in this comments for the association, but you missed one association, and that's your management association. I do feel that they should have a right to get up and say something to you also. Got a couple questions. One, I was kind of disappointed in a young lady from Eisenhower. I couldn't believe the huge article we had in the Sun paper showing Eisenhower beating Cajon. Now, Cajon's been a powerhouse for girls basketball for years, and to have your team come out and beat him by one little lousy point, which is <laughs> pretty big, I was kind of sad that she didn't put more into it for that. And when I knew that Miss O'Kelly used to be there, I, you were you at the game? No, I wasn't, but I'm uh, very proud of them. You should be. Yeah. That was a great game. But I did not go either, <laughs> even though all of my children graduated from Cajon. Mm -hmm. They were in the water sports, not that. I have a couple other things I want to ask you about. Uh, number two, you had your presentation on the audit. Is there some way that we can get a copy of that audit? The audit will be available just to website. Just to website. Yes. Okay, thank and you. And if you could not reach you to the uh, website, you'd like to have a, co a hard copy, we, we'll, we'll be glad to give you a copy. I prefer that because I have a computer that's 2003, and you get these big things that doesn't work too well. We'll, we'll be glad <laughs> to give you, give you a copy. All right. I'll pick one up later. Thank you, sir. Okay. The other thing. Oh. I'll get it in just a second. The other thing <laughs> is, I was talking to Dr. Sousa about an item in your agenda that really kind of bothered me, and that item was G11, and I would like to ask him at this time if he would explain it to you, because if you read it, you're paying somebody $70 an hour for teaching. So I think you should ask him what it, because when he explained it to me, I understood a little bit more about it, but I still think it's kind of high. So that's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Fletcher. Um, do we have someone from REA? Good evening, President Montez, members of the board, interim superintendent, Mr. Islam. Um, I have our demand to bargain that I would like to present to the board of president and to Mr. Islam. So may I bring it up? Yes, please. And we will make sure to put our management association on the next agenda. Does anyone mind if we uh, invite the management association to speak for two yeah. minutes? I, I think we should be okay with that. Do, do we have anyone that would like to comment on anything tonight or speak uh, from the management association? All righty. Good evening, um, Board President Montez and Vice President O'Kelly. I think it's the first time I got to say that this time. <laughs> <laughs> Board members Martinez, uh, Clerk um, Walker, and uh, Mr. Ayala, and our student board uh, member. Um, I am here on behalf of RSMA, and I actually was just going to get up and say we wanted to make sure that we were included. <laughs> in one of those groups that you talk with, with the superintendent search, the district management team, and then we also wanted to make sure that we were added back to the agenda. So as usual, this new board is ahead of us, so thank you very much, and thank you CWA for pointing that out. Appreciate it. <laughs> Night. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Next on the agenda is public hearing item D, and there is none, so that'll take us to consent calendar items. All items on the consent calendar will be enacted uh, upon in one motion unless pulled by the Board of Education members or interim superintendent for individual action. Uh, so with that, could I get a motion to approve consent calendar items reference E through J? 
I'll make that motion with a question. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Board Clerk, Ms. And Walker. I have discussion on G10. Okay, so would we like to pull uh, these items for uh, discussion, separate discussion and, and, and approval or denial and approve the remaining items that are sure. not being questioned? So we'll go ahead and pull item, did you say G10? Mm-hmm. G10. Do we have any other pools? G11. G11. Do we have any more? I have G11 too. So, two of those. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, I also had H6, I'm sorry. H6, and I would like to discuss F3. Okay, with that, uh, can I get a motion to approve all remaining items? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so first we'll go to item G10. And uh, I believe uh, Ms. O'Kelly. Yeah. You have concern? Okay. Um, first of all, uh, this item is dated January uh, 14th, which is in the past. So am I to assume we've already approved this item? We already approved for speech therapists from different companies, and remember in the past, and so we've had actually had, and I'll let Erica go to the podium on this, but as she goes up, we had about five vacancies in the speech, either for maternity leave or for growth capacity, if you can approach the podium, and then we had to fill it because then the students are without a speech teacher. Okay. And so we had to, that's why we had to immediately fill it because the company would not hold the person. We, and we had to give uh, a, an agreement right away to the company because they were holding the person for us. Uh, okay, well first of all, we had to ratify an agreement. So how are we ratifying the agreement? M Ms. Do you want me to address? Okay. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello, Ms. Uh, Mr. Montez and Vice President Board members, um, Mr. Islam and everyone um, okay so the reason why we're ratifying is that there are services right now at one of our actually two of our sites where the services have not been provided because the SLP is on maternity leave so that's why we had to ask for the ratification because these services are already mandated by the IEP and so when I came in the last time and I spoke on your on behalf of what something else that we pulled we were adding another vendor but this vendor has what's called an SLP assistant, which is the person who's covering the actual therapy services for our um, SLP who right now is currently on maternity leave. Does that, I don't know if I answered your question. Okay, so uh, we have not approved this person before. This is- Correct, this is another no. vendor who had, who had an SLP assistant. Okay. Not an SLP. Well, I, one of the things that I'm big on is getting these items on time. I do understand emergencies, but if the kids have been going without services for two weeks, then that means two weeks ago that item could have been in where we would have been able to approve it, you know, hopefully on time. Uh, the other thing I had is... Uh, can, I, can I add a little uh, bit to that? Sure. 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 Speech therapists, as you know, are very hard to find. Right. And... Um, the companies com compete against each other for even the same therapist. So when they say they have someone, you have another company who's ready to pick up that same person. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have been searching for speech therapists and have had vacancies all year in competing with these companies. And so what happens is the children go without services and then we all compensatory, which means make up sessions. Parents don't like that and it's not to the best benefit of the children either because 
you know, you can't give them all the service in one week or in three weeks when they sh really should be getting it throughout the year. So with special education, it's very common to ratify services so that you don't have a disruption of services. We try our best to get the people in on time, but if we can't find them, we can't find them. We have had with um, personnel an advertisement for speech therapists since last year. And we've had contracted services, I believe, for the last five years with both. And so at this time, you're seeing a, p a, a speech pathologist assistant, which we have never used and had to resort to because they couldn't find us a credential special ed um, speech therapist. So, And I understand that, but you have, from our point of view, if for some reason, whatever the reason might have been, we didn't want to approve this item, the person's already been working without approval. So that puts us in a hard spot. Right. Okay. The other thing I wanted to ask is, uh, this is for $11,550 for six weeks of work. Is that typically what these people make? Well, if we have an actual speech therapist, it will be 85 to $95 an hour. If they, and that's typically what they make, depending mm -hmm. if they're bilingual or not bilingual, depending on their experience. This is an assistant, so we went with the assistant because it was on a temporary basis and we couldn't find an actual therapist. So what we're doing is we're very fortunate that, that um, our coordinator is actually a speech therapist too, so if we have an assessment to do, she'll pick that up so this person can actually only provide service. This person is not credentialed to be able or authorized to do any assessment but only services. I see. So this price is only for an assistant. If it was an actual therapist, it would be between 85 and $90 an hour. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on G10? <coughs> okay. Um, so with that, do we have a motion to approve item G10? So moved. Second? Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Next we have G11, and that is to ratify the agreement between Rialto Unified School District and Professional Tutors of America to provide 140 hours of one-to-one -one instructional sessions for student number 52139 per the individual education plan. Now, le let me just get this straight. Uh, per the IEP, uh, it was determined that this student, uh, this student deserves to or needs to be provided these this amount of hours of one-on-one -on -one instruction? Right, and I'll let Ms. Del Rio go to the microphone, but I'll give you some background knowledge. S most districts have a blanket amount, which I had brought at one time, but I wanted the board to know of every expense we do so that you know the amount so it's not hidden behind a blanket mm -hmm. amount, and that's why mm -hmm. this is on the agenda, and that's why it's late in a way. Uh, the other thing is to remember that when the kids don't get their services we owe those hours even if it was from behind you know time it's compensatory education that Ms. Del Rio said and so we owe these hours and then we owe additional hours so I'll let her go in detail on it. Right and it's an example was the speech there good evening by the way I didn't mean to say good evening to, Sorry. to <laughs> all of you <laughs> board members and audience but um, I wanted to tell you this is a prime example of, um, of like the speech therapist if we don't give those services then we have to provide those services at a later time, and if we don't find people to do them, then you have to end up picking up people who are expensive, and those are your agencies. The agencies make their money that way, and so sometimes you have to resort to, to that, and um, so just to let you know a little bit of, of, no of background is that s parents can go back and claim compensatory for back as far as two years, <laughs> unless you get if a settlement If it's in the IEP? Right. If it's in, if if it's in anything, they can go mm. back and say you didn't provide something. Or if it was an agreement or if it was in the IEP, they can go back and say, you know what, two years ago I asked for this, I didn't get a response or it wasn't provided. And so those things can cause compensatory mm. or settlement agreements, okay? And the settlement agreements in some dis districts that come to the board and others they don't and so on. So um, with this, I can't, I can't disclose this case to you and tell you the information, no, but no, I can tell you that in this case and in this district, um, when this situation <coughs> came up, um, and 
they came up a couple of times. Um, I asked if we had a home teacher that could provide the service after school because these kids cannot be tutored by a an aide, for example, okay. because they're not credentialed. So you say, okay, I have an option to go back and use home teachers. When I went back to student services back then and asked for home teachers, I was told we don't have home teachers here. We only have what's called home hospital teachers. And home hospital teachers require a doctor prescription. Well, because this is not a medical reason, <coughs> you can't use the home teacher, and that's mm. what our policy says. So since then, Angela and I have been working um, with um, how to put that in place. We're looking at some procedures mm -hmm. and to start using home teachers. And home teachers you use for various reasons. For example, if you have a student who hasn't been enrolled for a week for because they're getting assessments or we're finding an unpublic school placement or uh, we can't, you know, there's not a program for them at this time, you can provide them home instruction in the meantime if the parents are in agreement. If we weren't to find that, we would have to use something like Professional uh, um, Tutors of America, which is used throughout Los Angeles and Orange County and, and San Bernardino County. And so at this, in this particular time, that's what we had to resort to to replace 140 hours of, of uh, lessons that we felt the student needed. We have another situation coming up, and we are going to be using a teacher. So it will be at a lower cost but it's something we didn't have in place. Mm -hmm. So for this particular instance, this cost is for one tutor? It's for one, it's 140 hours at $70 an hour. For one student? For one student, but remember mm -hmm. it's 140 days. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and in this, I have to tell you, in identifying we don't have a home teacher, you couldn't put it right there and then in place, but we now are working on creating a pool of teachers and putting that procedure in place. I did bring some procedures with me that I have shared with Angela that we are looking at to, to finalize. Yeah, I'm sure we have some teachers who would like to earn oh, some sure extra money yeah. and mm -hmm. it would be a, mm -hmm. a more reasonable amount. Right, so we okay. want to create that pool because teachers will do it, mm -hmm. except they're it's always been authorized to only have home teachers. It's not a process for referring or um, uh, requesting a home teacher, only home hospital teachers. Okay, thank okay. you. Let's go there. Okay. Yeah. May I continue? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, President Montes. Um, Ms. Del Rio, um, it was asked about the, the cost. Thank you for covering that. Um, I just wanted the public to hear it from you that through the Special Ed Task Force and even before that, have we been trying to cover these items in house? And because of not having an in-house, we've had to go out. I, I just want the public to hear that. This is an example of some of the programs that are not in-house right now. Mm -hmm. um, you have kids going to non-public schools because there weren't. Um, we don't have programs that are, are as that can be comparable to the services that are being provided at some of the non-public schools. But certainly, those are things that we can bring in. Certainly, you know, I've been here since July, and so it's not going to happen overnight. Right but we are identifying that. And then there's other programs, like the autism programs, uh, where we provide ABA for our students. The county programs, which are the severe programs, the medically fragile students. Mm -hmm. Well, it's gonna take time to bring them back and it's gonna cost money to bring them back. So when, when you see a, a cost at the beginning of the year with programs that we are identifying, such as uh, adult transition and preschool programs that we are now putting into place the way they should be, um, it's gonna cost money to do that. But you know, the students come first and you want to provide right. them with the education that they need to have and that's gonna cost money because it hasn't been there for a while. And so um, it's hard for me to not do anything about it and to just turn my face the other, my cheek the other way and say, mm -hmm. well, we're not gonna continue to spend the money when I'm seeing the children are progressing. And I think the biggest need, if I can say, is that we need intervention programs. Right now, um, you know, uh, we have intervention programs we want to put in place, but we need more. We have an excessive amount of referrals being sent to for special education mm -hmm. because right now it's the fix-all. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful that we have very strong curriculum people who are looking at that to bring in, and we have mm -hmm. RTI programs that's being put in, and you know, um, you know, Mrs. Valenzuela has been very helpful in that. And um, I stayed for the principal's meeting for elementary, and I was so happy to see all the things that are being put in place, and so those are things that we're taking back to the teams and saying, we've got to support this. Mm -hmm. And so we have just recently put an RTI program, which um, for our, uh, 
our preschool program, which didn't exist either. We just opened up, uh, we're opening up a TK, and we opened up an autism program, which will allow kids that have been sitting at home to come into the programs. So it's expanding their programs, and we are going to be adding more instructional time instead of having a four-day program, looking at a five-day program the way it should be. But those things are going to cost money because you're going to have to hire more teachers. Right. So you might see an, an increase, but that's where it is. It's going all to the children. Well, there's nothing wrong with hiring more teachers. <laughs> thank you, Mrs. Uh, Del Rio. Uh, do you, you guys have much. anything else? Thank yes, you. Just one uh, final uh, comment. Thank you for working here. Thank you, and I appreciate being here. And, and for those of you do who don't know uh, Ms. Del Rio, uh, she is Director of Special Education, Mrs. Monica Del Rio. Thank you. Norma Del Rio. Uh, uh, Norma, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. I'm That's Ed, Ed <coughs> coffee, Monica, too. Monica's over there. <laughs> Monica and Norma. <laughs> she does the harder work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so with that, do we have a motion to approve item G11? I'll make Se that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now on to H6. And that is business and financial consent item H6 to approve an agreement with the Dolinka Group LLC effective January 22nd, 2015 to assist in complying with continuing disclosure undertakings related to outstanding general obligation bonds and certificates of participation for the fiscal year 2014-2015. Um. The uh, concern I had on this one, the agreement's for $7,500, and then it says plus reimbursable expenses, but there's no, like, not to exceed amount on reimbursable expenses, and I feel there should be, or, you know, they could reimburse a whole lot of stuff. The, the, the amount, again, this is um, just uh, they don't believe there will be any reimbursable, but they just like a catch in case they have to, um, uh, this is kind of a pretty standard, uh, and we cannot quantify any amount. So I believe with the 7,500 is not to exceed, does recover the reimbursable, does that, uh, but the- But I think well it has it to be worded. Well, it says plus reimbursable, plus reimbursable. expenses. Right, but, but the oh. what I'm trying to uh, clarify this, uh, at this time, they could not give us any number. If, we, if I put any number, that's misleading. So uh, the number reimbursable will be based on if they made a, um, yeah. they have to produce a document how much uh, uh, they spent to, you know, to reimburse. Right, but we should have a not to exceed amount. There but if I give you any amount, I will call this uh, is incorrect. And, and no, it's not incorrect. It's not to exceed. We're saying, you know, we're not going to reimburse more than this amount of money. And, and this is the first year they're going to do this, uh, this uh, for us. So perhaps we'll know next year. They have no track record of what else they have to do, and that's why it was a challenge. I, I did uh, had the same concern that you were expressing, Mrs. Well, Kelly. Well, that's uh, can't we amend this and put a not to exceed amount on it? Or, or perhaps, uh, Mr. Islam, what we could do is pull the item and get a ballpark figure from them. What what they they uh, what's normally expected to be uh, a reimbursable amount, and then we can bring that back to the board for approval. Uh. Uh, it's I have seen not to exceed amounts on reimbursable mm -hmm. expenditures in the past. Um, I think Mrs. O'Kelly's concern is we don't want it to be the blank uh, check, you know. Right, I, I right. Hear you. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we right. can do that, you know. Or but or again, for it to be the reimbursable amount exceed what the what the original amount is is for. The the challenge is, let's say I put a in other words, hidden costs. Y you're correct, mm -hmm. and I had the same difficulty. The challenge, let's say I put a thousand dollar not reimbursable. Then later on, if you exceed, I'm not to bring this back to you, then say, look, here's the real cost. So we're going to monitor this. You know, I, I don't believe there'll be any, but at this time, I don't know. Well, you know. we can either amend it tonight or we can pull the item and get a number from them of what they think might be reasonable. I can bring it back on the But I don't want to vote on this the way it's worded. Sure, I can, I can bring it back. Is the so board comfortable pulling it? I will engage and I'll find out as reasonable long as amount. No timeline that we be moving. Yeah, no, we're good. We're okay, good. Okay. So, we're okay. So then we will go ahead and uh, <coughs> pull item H pull six. item H six and bring it back uh, for the next agenda meeting. 
uh, one thing I'd like to remind the board, I have to bring back as a ratified, this is a really a compliance issue, as you know, whether we are through a bond, yeah. the finding. So I want to be clear, if I bring it back, uh, I, I, I recommend to Paul tonight, I don't want to delay the, the, co the company, they have to do the work, mm -hmm. and then we'll be out of compliance. So my recommendation, let's pull it, and I'll bring back to ratify effective January 27. As a reference, you might look back at our last cost from a different uh, vendor right. and see what the last bond cost us to do and start there. We have never done it. That's why we're out of compliance. I, I understand, but I, I thought we had another group that was doing something for us with the last issuance of Series A and B. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we want to go by their cost. But uh, well, that would give us an idea sure, of their cost. Sure. I will bring no. back to you with the... With the no. <laughs> but my point is that, uh, we don't want to delay the, the exactly. to comply. So once they return back to your next agenda, it will be ratified. So okay. I hope both you okay. Th thank you, Mr. Thank Islam. You. Next up, we have item F3. And that's the uh, first reading of revised board policy 4315A through E, administrative and supervisory personnel. Evaluation supervision. Uh, let's see here. And, uh, and, and I'm glad that uh, I believe Mrs. Del Rio brought up uh, the fact that our policy, uh, somebody brought up the fact regarding our policies um, and, and moving forward. One of the things that that um, that we want to do is really take a close look at not just the policies that we have now that we need to change, amend, uh, or update, but also policies that we want to enact to protect the district from um, questionable situations that can arise. Um, for example, we need to have a uh, policy, we need to develop a policy. Well, we'll leave that for, for new business, but, or I'll save that for my board reports. For F3, there's some changes that are being uh, made to the evaluation process for um, supervisory uh, personnel. Um, would anyone like to comment on why these changes are being suggested or recommended to the board? Uh, yeah, President Montes, this is uh, a just an update. We get updates from uh, California School Boards Association, and there's really not, I would say, any substantial changes in here, but these are basically for management and you know principals, vice principals, myself uh, who are management just documenting the procedures of evaluations for those kind of people okay so since the staff that the staff that is also uh, the staff that's met recommending the the changes for the evaluations are also part of the people that are evaluated for am I correct correct <laughs> okay yeah I, okay I, I wanted to get that cleared up um, what is the biggest difference? Because I, I know that you get things from CSBA, but you pick and choose what you want to include on the agenda. Um, and I don't know if it'd be, I, I, one of the things I'd like to suggest moving forward is uh, board policy uh, workshops uh, on really uh, studying and understanding our current board bylaws and board policies and then seeing what we can do to improve them, but um, there's been some board bylaws and policies that staff has been recommending to update or change, and I just want to make sure that we're doing it in the best interest of the district and the best interest uh, of protecting uh, our, our, our employees and not not changing policy necessarily just to benefit, you know, any particular group of people. Um, I do find it a little awkward that, you know, that staff is making recommendations to change the evaluation process. Um, 
uh, when the, the same staff are included in the evaluation process? It, there's really no substantial changes, but sometimes there are new standards that come up. For example, mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. on the second page of that yeah. well, work uh, policy. Well, for example, I see crossed out here, such standards may include those of the California Professional Standards for Education Leaders, as well as other standards and criteria developed by the board and superintendent. And that whole section has been crossed out. But it brings, but it brings it back. If you read the, the you, you read it read again it. in bold, it says the same thing again. But well, it, it doesn't, it, if it said the same thing, then what's the purpose of changing it? it That's why CSB <laughs> recommends it. So you look at the changes, for example, if you look at any certificate administrator, supervisor, employee who is new, right, it's crossed out. Then you look at the next paragraph, says any employee shall be about annually for the first two years of employment. No, it's saying the same they thing, but in a different language. It's just rewording. We're rewording mm -hmm. what it says. <laughs> so that's why you have to look at it real carefully. The no, other I thing. I am, I, I, I am, and I don't see where, where the section I just read, I don't see it in the, in the next. In the next one, and the last yeah. sentence where it says. Actually, on the bottom of the page on 3.2, it's included there. The re employee, his or her supervisor, the superintendent, or designee. Uh -huh. And then also, Mr. Montez, the standards. Yeah. Standards on the bottom. Of the the standards on the bottom yeah. is going to the SIPSEL nationally. That's. Um, the management standards that is being used. It stands for the California Professional Standards for Educational Leaders. That, um, as far as I know, Tom, that is new. Yeah, yeah the standards. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the update as well from CSBA. Okay. And Mr. Montes, in the past, the strikeouts were not <coughs> included. It was only the changes. We've included this, the strikeouts so you know what the changes are. You know are. what's right. the old and what the new. Yes. Uh, well, it, it should always be that way. Yeah, yeah it was right. until <laughs> for right. some time. And yeah. Mr. Montes, uh, we as a superintendent cabinet, we review this before we put place on the agenda. We have sometimes find uh, changes not uh, right for Real 24 School District. As you were saying, it's not we're taking everything CSBA yeah. recommend because uh, they, are, they, are, they have expertise in the board policy right. and the governance. So we respectfully take their recommendations. But furthermore, each of division had, they reviewed their items, and we as the superintendent cabinet engage and review the items before we place on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, li like I said, um, uh, moving forward, uh, I think it'd be good to have a workshop for board policies sure. and board bylaws sure. for the board to study, understand, and uh, make any you know uh, suggestions or goals uh, <coughs> to uh, make sure that the board policies um, reflect the the goals of the district and the goals of the board so um, yeah. comment yeah <laughs> in particular it looks like this was probably triggered from the uh, local control and accountability yes. Plan. right yes right. Um, it says so second paragraph where it uh, references everything in bold there the change then on F3.5, there's legal reference that uh, it either requires change to updates California codes, and that that's where we really don't have too much <laughs> choice on some mm -hmm. of this. Right. Yeah, <coughs> well, there's also legal references that are crossed out. Mm -hmm. But the but main thing yeah. is, as teaching and learning changes, which it is drastically, the way we evaluate our employees has to change too. It has no, to match I, with what we're no, doing. No, and I understand. Don't don't, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, I I just I just wanted to get clarification on who's making the suggestions. These are from to the CSBA. Changes. Yeah. I CSBA doesn't set our agenda. Staff staff puts these makes these recommendations. I know they got it from CSBA. Okay. But CSBA didn't put it on. I there. think Mohammed said though that it each it area. It goes uh, over the changes for their department right. and approves it, and that's how it gets in the agenda. Yes, Mr. Montes, every division had, in this case, assistant superintendent of us uh, at services, Jasmine, on she received her policy, she was going to review this. And furthermore, every policy um, and administrative regulations, we as a superintendent cabinet, we go through entire policy 
before we place an ad I'm an agenda for you for your first reading uh, and, and I understand that and, and I, I I appreciate it um, and and if I may uh, the LCAP changed a lot of old regulations that no longer um, uh, applies to the so that those are the changes that are coming to the process mm, right so with that do we have a motion to approve I move that we approve do we have a second second all in favor? Aye. 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 All righty. That brings us up to item K. Mm -hmm. Discussion action items. Do we have a motion to right. approve? Question. Um, we approved those items that the board had questions on, but I don't think we went through, correct me if I'm wrong, and actually approve the consent calendar item, the yeah. list of them. We, 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 we did, did that oh first. Did. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Do we have a motion to approve discussion action items? Don't we have to read each one individually? Oh, that's right. Thank you. That's okay. <laughs> Vice President. Uh, the first item, we do have to go through these individually. Um, we no longer are going in a consent calendar form. So the first item is to ratify an agreement between the Rialto Unified School District and Linda Mood Bell Learning Processes to provide one-on-one -on -one instructional sessions for special education students per the individual e education plan, otherwise known as an IEP, effective November 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Discussion. I have discussion. Uh, we are back in the same place here. Mm -hmm. This is from November. Now, honestly, ratifying something from November is getting really ridiculous. Right. So let me give you a little background that m Mr. Islam and I had in the past when it was, and I'll let Ms. Del Rio go up to the microphone too. But in the past, these items, because they were instruction for the kids, never ever came to the board, okay? Because they were part of the instruction program for the student. Well, if I we're paying them, they have to come to the board. Right, but I wanted to make sure that everything came to the board so you knew. And this is not for one student, this is for, f as time went on, it added up to five students. But I wanted to make sure the board was informed of every expenditure, and that's why we have it on the board item. <coughs> okay, I'm not trying to be difficult here, right. but this getting these things in on time is imperative. There's the very occasional emergency, but we, this looks ridiculous to go back and ratify this far, okay. far back. Mrs. O'Kelly, I think what we're trying to say is that <coughs> originally this wasn't something, we did the contracts, but we were told they didn't have to come to the board for approval, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's why they didn't. Um, later on, we were told that um, you know that it's better to bring them to the board for approval, and that's why they came. So prior to that, the policy was not to bring them, but we are we are now bringing them to be to have. I don't understand. I thought I don't, I all don't expenditures uh, had to be approved by the board. Am I right? That's what the board uh, wants. So how could they not have been had to come to the board? Let me clarify. Yes, you do approve all expenditures. Some expenditures comes in the form of purchase order. Doug, did you see we said something about blankets? The purchase order. So my direction to the staff, this type of expenditure need to be in a, in a contract. Um, so this is a called contract versus purchase order. If you look at tonight, you have a list of all the, the, all the purchase order mm -hmm. you, are you are gonna approve tonight. Mm -hmm. So board, you're absolutely correct. Nothing we can spend without your approval. Some of the process comes, purchase order, we present to you because of, uh, after the fact, that we mm -hmm. cannot spend, give you the PO without PO being uh, issued to the, to the vendor. Uh, that's not, uh, that if that process doesn't work, that you need to know what's the PO before the PO is, can be uh, produced. So the fact of the matter, yes, that's a, that's a report I'm referring to. So if I understand correctly, they used to come to us this way. Now we are being as a contract. Okay. That's yeah. the only Well, thing. if it is a contract, oh, uh, it oh the okay. board should also have, uh, be able to review the contracts, any contracts. If, if, uh, if there's a contract for the board to, rev to approve, we don't want just this one, two sentence on here. We should be able to at least have access to review the contract in case we have any questions. But uh, are you, 
let me make sure I'm clear. So any and in all in the future, in the future. So any and all contract board like to have a copy uh, with your agenda. This will be a nightmare. No, no, no. just uh, uh, access available. If have we have available. They're yeah. available, board. Yeah. So you, you yeah. ask me a copy. Yeah. We glad to give you a copy. Okay. But if you want to do agenda, I can show you. I we can do that. But I hope no. Well, well what's the criteria for determining what it needs a contract and what just goes on the purchase order? As you heard Mr. Mr. Dorio saying in the past, it was treated as an instructional need. Like okay. we buy supplies for the school. All right. We buy uh, textbooks. Mm -hmm. They don't come in the form of contract. Okay. I, I call this a service. So it has need. a contract. It has a contract. All right. And yeah. it protect us. You know, yeah, it, it protect and our it's, better, it's better this way. That way, uh, no one can can point out to us right. that we were spending unnecessary right. expenditures. I right. think this is a better system process. No, it's, board fine. Is an and it's fine. It's fine. It's improvement. We'll, Thank we'll you. It might be rough at first, but we'll get through it. And we, 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 it's not and that and we're catching up. You know, yeah, we're catching and up. And the questions come from wanting right. to understand. All right. So. Okay, Norma. Thank you. So, Mrs. O'Kelly, one more thing, because this is a lot expenditure. Mrs. Del Rio and I have talked about reading, setting up some kind of reading program yes. at each high school so that we can actually avoid this. We can actually have our teachers trained in this. We can't, this is a trade name, we can't call it that. Right. But it can be a reading strategy that can be used at the high school later on. So we've actually yeah. talked about oh, that. Okay. We talked about like a reading lab with different, stra different stra reading strategies that mm -hmm. would be to address the needs for each individual child. And one of them would be the strategies that are used through Linda Mobile, the, the, uh, the uh, visualizing, verbalizing idea. Okay. Bringing more in-house. Yes, and then again, it's cost. the thing about bringing in-house. And I apologize, it looked like we were bringing something late, but it was just a change of process. Okay, thank on you. On but again, we wanted to let you as a board know every expense so you were aware. Okay. okay. I think it was an intent, a very good intent on behalf of the superintendent and the social superintendent to be more transparent mm -hmm. okay. about yes. what we're doing thank with you. our it kids. It is an improvement. Yes, yes. And we, we, we understand your concern. We don't want to bring things after <laughs> the fact. That's, I don't like it, I know you don't, and that's that we're going to, that's not the really, we want to make sure it does ha continue to happen. Mm. So and my question is, I, I'm seeing a lot of change, a lot of IEP um, driven change, but I don't see that this says anything about transportation. Um, I probably should have checked my backup here, but on all these items, I'm assuming there is a transportation cost attached to it, since we're not doing it in-house. There's a reimbursement to the parents for mileage, and those do come to you separately. Okay, okay. Because mm -hmm. these are after school, mm -hmm. and our buses are all occupied with transporting our children, so the parents are gracious enough to say, well, we'll transport, and so we reimburse them for their mileage. Okay, um, that, that was one of my concerns. With the FICMAT study, it said that our transportation costs are killing us. Mm -hmm. And by that, we will go bankrupt mm -hmm. just from transportation costs. So if we could work on a strategy in for the future. But in the meantime, I would like to see a line item that transportation must be provided or the parents are transporting at cost. Mm -hmm. That way, yeah. it's very clear to us and the public. One of the things is that <coughs> Derek and I have been working on is we've identified that you should have no more than maybe three to four percent of kids who are, and mm -hmm. it should be the kids mm -hmm. who are orthopedically <coughs> handicapped, mostly right. and are very severe, should have door to door. We have, I want to say loosely without being exact, maybe 80 percent of our kids or even more than that on door to door. And that costs money because the, bu the bus is stopping and stopping and stopping, mm -hmm. and not to <coughs> mention the kids are on the bus longer. So um, Derek and I have looked at that, and we don't want to cause a ruckus by <laughs> changing everybody's um, yeah. uh, transportation, but we're doing it based on, we're doing as the IEPs come up, and we're putting some procedures in place. That's another procedure we're putting in place that we have identified, and that will, re that will reduce the cost. The, okay. the other thing is I don't recall the FICMAT uh, report stating that uh, a high cost of transportation was coming from reimbursing parents for driving their kids to the services. Th they I just I said I transportation. I, I, I also do recall that in, in recent years, the district has also contracted or subcontracted transportation services other than mm -hmm. utilizing our own uh, transportation services. 
So it, I think it's a number of factors, but um, uh, the main important thing, I think the overall big picture here is it's going to cost us money to provide the services needed to our special mm -hmm. education students. Um, and in order to comply with the laws, uh, in order to provide the students with the services that they're entitled to receive, um, we, we, we have to pay. pay. We have to pay. There you go. And we want to make sure we're, we're want to make sure we're not doing what was also done in the past, is where expenditures were were made that probably didn't need to be made. You know, but as long as you guys are bringing it to us and and, and it's something we need and the kids need, mm -hmm. and, and door to door is one of them that we yeah. really seriously need to look at. Yeah. Okay, all as right. long as you're on. Yeah. All <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Item two. Approve to lease or and or purchase portable buildings for fiscal year 2014, 2015. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do second. We have a second. Discussion. Okay. Uh, just a question because uh, it says the item in the agenda says that the price of leasing the portables will be paid by district and developer fees. Does that mean it is not going to be paid by Measure Y fees? You're correct. Are any portables being paid for by Measure Y fees? At this time, best of my knowledge, no, none. Okay, would you check on that for me? I uh, I see the the my director was going to say no. Okay, great, because that because ate up a lot of money. <laughs> yes, we okay. we we can use Measure Y money okay. to pay for the portable. Any, any more? Yes. Any more questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Lord knows we need some portables at some of our schools here. Yes, yes. we do. Oh. Right. This is a good thing. <laughs> Next up, we have item three, approve an agreement with Garcia and Associates to provide architectural services required for the relocation of five district-owned portable classroom buildings from Cal Elementary School to Casey Elementary School. Yay. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do Second. Okay. Uh, and I just have to say, I'm really glad to see that Casey's getting five portables because they desperately need it. And, <laughs> and I'm going to recuse myself. Um, I know the gentleman, and uh, I don't want to uh, question ethics coming in. So. <coughs> All righty. Any more comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 And one abstention. Next up, item four, accept the fiscal year 2013-2014 annual audit financial report completed by Vicente Lloyd and Stutzman, LLP. Do we have a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Do we have a second? <laughs> second. <laughs> All in, well, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next up, we have item five, approve a memorandum of understanding with the city of Rialto to provide two additional safety resource officers to serve all high schools and middle schools within the district beginning February 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2015 was the correction. Awesome. Is that correct? Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Okay. So moved. Second. Second. Any Mr. questions Chair. or uh, comments? I just want to ask, uh, Mohammed, this brings our total of resource officers to how many? Uh, total of three. We only have one now? W we have We one. had three in the past, and, and it was shrunk down to yes. one, and now we're going back to, back to three. three. Oh, okay. I just saw something that I would uh, like clarification on, please. Okay. We're, we're not at item eight yet. That is another uh, resource officer from the city of San Bernardino. Right. And this one says to serve all high schools. I'm just looking for a difference here. One is for Rialto High. So well, the city of San Bernardino will only help uh, the the help pay for the yeah. for the officer in their own city. Their area. Right. I understand that. I was just pointing that out oh and okay. looking at it to clarify it for myself. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so with item five, any more comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, item six. Uh, I must recuse myself. All right. Uh, 
and that's to adopt the resolution n number 14-15-45 excusing the absence of board member joseph w martinez from the wednesday january 7 2015 regular meeting of the board of education do we have a move so move motion second any discussion all in favor aye aye, aye. <laughs> Number seven, approve an agreement with Leadership Associates to conduct the superintendent search. So moved. Second. Any uh, questions or discussion, or comments? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Number eight, approve a memorandum of understanding <coughs> with the city of San Bernardino to provide one part-time safety resource officer to serve Rialto High School beginning February 15, 2015 through February 1st, 2015 through June 30th, 2015. Do we have a motion? So, so moved. moved. <laughs> do we have second? Second. All, uh, do we have a discussion? Mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number nine, adopt resolution 14-15-46 on local reserves cap SB 858 section 27. Uh, California Education Code 42127.01. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make that motion, and I'm That I'm was 3%, right? That was 3%, is that uh, what um, you said? That is actually a resolution, if I remember Th correctly. May I? Reserve cap? Uh, yes. Yeah. May I? SB 858 uh, call for governance plan to re lower the cap. We as a school district, um, we've been invited by California School Board Association to, to appeal, to appeal this, not to lower the cap. We as a district, uh, sometimes we have a local need and purpose to maintain the cap above three percent. And even though three percent does not pay for one week of uh, your payroll, so w and that's the reason I bring this resolution to you as a governing board to adopt. So I can support, uh, send to the California School Board Association to appeal on behalf of the school districts. Okay. Very appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, do we have a uh, motion to approve item 10, the recommendations of the administrative hearing panel? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Comments. Next is uh, item L. Comments from our interim superintendent. Thank you, uh, President Montez. Um, last night we have uh, Middle College um, Ninth Grade Prep Academy. Um, after working for a long time, I can say from the beginning of. Uh, my arrival to Rialto, my uh, dream, I know we had a Martin Luther King uh, just um, a day, just a couple of days ago. I had a dream to bring this program to Rialto Unified School Districts. Uh, dream came to reality, we are here. The program, uh, we have over 100 parents came, um, it's called the Parent Night, to receive the information about the program. It was an outstanding, and I thank uh, Peggy. Peggy is not here tonight, uh, and uh, Ed uh, did an outstanding job uh, sharing the information of the parents, interested parents, and the students were here last night um, and received all the information regarding the program. So it was a very exciting time, and um, the cl the class is going to begin February th 23rd, uh, starting ninth grade. We call Prep Academy. Going uh, beginning 10th uh, grade, they'll be called middle college program. What that means at the end of their high school, uh, when they graduate, they're getting associate of art degree, which is two years uh, junior college, and or they'll get credit if they, they didn't earn the um, um, A degree, they'll get credit towards going college, meaning they didn't meet all the requirement uh, required by the community college. They will be getting at least uh, earn whatever the credit they earn, they can be credit towards going four years college. So at, at no time, the student didn't lose anything. It's like uh, they gained something. So the program is very exciting time. We're going to start uh, teaching our, uh, the Valley College professor will be taught those classes. Every high school, um, uh, we'll have uh, 35 students will be enrolled in the program, taught by the Valley College professor. 
and uh, we have, um, again, class going to begin at every comprehensive high school. Three or, three or four comprehensive high school going to begin this class February 23rd, 2015. And um, we plan to have uh, 105 students enrolled in the class. Um, and th through the selection process, we'll have at least 35 will be selected uh, to be middle college program. Our goal to bring that uh, number of students enrolled up to 150 students <coughs> as moving forward. So this is a great news for Rialto for School District. The I call this a groundbreaking for being a program. Very exciting for me, very exciting for our community and our students. Uh, as you can see, students are going to graduate. They're also enrolling in the high college classes uh, and uh, they will be two years ahead of time. Meaning by the end of the high school, they have to finish another two years to finish their four years college. Uh, just a question. They're starting February 23rd, right? That's correct. Now, are they getting both high school and Valley College credit? So for the You're correct. For okay, the so the semester will have been well into effect by February 23rd. So, Mr. Kelly, the February 23rd is the Valley College credit. The class is actually two hours and ten minutes. So they're getting the Valley College credits, ten credits for that class, which will be transferable to the high school, but they can always use towards college. Okay, so even though they're starting on a different date, they're going to put in the More right time. Yeah. Okay, all right. Any further concern on this? The second item, I want to let you know that there's a good news, governor's uh, proposals. They'd like to uh, continue funding our adult education program, uh, sustain with the districts for one more year. As you remember, the program going away will be uh, run to the community colleges. So governor proposed to sustain the program and fund it to the school district one more year. So we're going to maintain our program for our community. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Islam. Uh, next, uh, we'd like to, uh, would you like to start, Mr. Martinez? Okay, uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending. Uh, looks like we're uh, a small group in, in here tonight. Lots of movement, lots of change. Um, Ms. Del Rio said, Norma said that it would uh, take money before we could implement the change, before we could actually bring things in-house. And that that's true. Um, luckily, we have the people to do it. If not, we need to hire the people to do it. And it is cheaper to do in-house than it is to transport somebody or pay parents to <coughs> transport and do it at a different site other than within the district. So it's, it's one of those things where eventually the vision is to have things as much as possible in-house and save cost. Then we can still spend that money on other needs of students. Um, but we do have um, the needs, our students have needs, and one of the easy things in education is that we don't have the decision making of who we serve. All that's part of you know California code and federal code. So as a board member, we serve students, and that is a real joy. Spending the money is a real joy. Finding the money is a real pain. <laughs> um, so all that to just say we're doing our best. Bear with us during a time of change. Um, we do have several um, committees and task forces available for you to serve on. Um, and with this up upcoming uh, superintendent search, uh, definitely stay on our website for dates. If not, we will ask um, probably the parent caller, the all call, to send information out. And um, there will be plenty of opportunity for your feedback as to what qualities you wish for in our next superintendent. Um, when we were going through the Measure Y program and meeting at, at the high schools, only about 40 people attended, and it was about the same 40 people. So 
please. Um, this really is your chance to give input into steering your district, your funds. Um, we want to meet your needs and your expectations as taxpayers. And we are expected to, and it is my joy to meet the students' needs. So thank you very much for just being here and, and serving your community just for all you do. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Martinez. Um, next, we'd like to go to board member, Mr. Joe Ayala. Well, thank you, President Montez. Uh, good evening, uh, staff and community. Um, I'd like to begin by uh, just sharing some comments uh, in case uh, anybody saw the State of the Union yesterday. Uh, one of the comments was that uh, there's a goal of our president to assist with uh, our community colleges not charging, mm -hmm. charging zero to go to school. Unfortunately, some of our kids are coming out of college with huge, huge uh, debt that it's going to take them years, and they haven't even started their lives yet. And so it, it's, it, it's, it's good to hear that. Uh, on the other hand, too, this may be an opportunity to look at our community colleges, and all of us here can rally in support of maybe finding ways to convert those two-year colleges into four-year colleges because uh, it, it makes it easier and creates more opportunities for our kids to find success, especially those who don't have the resources to travel long distances to continue with their education. We'll all benefit from those kinds of decision making. Uh, moving right along, we also have kids who are behind, okay? And um, uh, we have San Bernardino, we have Colton, we have uh, Montebello already in, in from what I hear, we're moving in the direction, too, of addressing those concerns by connecting those kids who are not really connected to school by developing these, these smaller learning communities, uh, learning departments. Uh, it's, it's been called link learning, but this is worth a try. And if we find ways to put resources, additional resources in the hands of our kids, I think it's going to pay off uh, more than, than we realize. Uh, it's good to hear from our community. Uh, you know, when they come up to the podium, sometimes we hear things that we like and sometimes we don't, but it's important to come up. And if you're a little bit shy, we'll support you. And if, if you're worried about saying something that there's going to be retaliation, no, that's not what we're about here. So we thank you for your participation. We have great people here at this district. And again, I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, uh, board member, Mr. Joe Ayala. Next, uh, I'd like to go over to you, board clerk, Mrs. Dina Walker. Miss. Uh, thank you. And I just want to be short and sweet. I am just glad to be here. Um, just finished coming off a weekend of, of celebrating uh, Martin Luther King's birthday. And uh, again, reiterating the vision that he had about children having opportunity. Um, so that, again, brings me to where we are today, and making sure that our students in our district have the most opportunity. Um, so in the process of moving uh, forward for our new superintendent, uh, or this is just an opportunity. And I want to make sure that everybody realizes that we all have a voice and a stake in this and that is taken very serious about having the input on who comes to lead us um, to our next level in this district. So I'm excited about that. Um, and again, encourage everybody to participate in the process. Um, glad to hear that we're moving forward with the Middle College Project, because that again is one of those signs mm -hmm. of districts that excel and that perform well. They have either dual, dual, um, dual enrollment mm -hmm. programs or middle college programs. So these are opportunities for kids to be not only educated with the high school diploma, but also college education. So I'm excited about that. And if, uh, uh, Mr. Um, Islam, if you can actually keep me and send me messages when you have next meetings around that. Uh, I'd like to be kept informed about that. Sure. Um, so again, thank you again, and I look forward to uh, continuing the work that we're doing here. Look forward to working with my board members. We've been moving pretty good. I'm excited. So uh, thank you all for your support as well for the board and our staff. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Walker. Next, we have uh, Board Vice President, Mrs. Nancy <laughs> O'Kelly. Well, believe it or not, I don't have a whole lot to say tonight, but <laughs> I want to thank you all for coming as usual. We definitely appreciate you sitting here till the late hours with us. Um, I wanted to say that I'm very excited about the implementation of the Middle College program. I think it's going to be of great benefit to our students. And uh, I be do believe that if uh, the president can work out a way for community college to be free for our students, uh, we'll see a big difference. Right now, a lot of them graduate from high school and they're lost and they can't find a job or if they do, it's a minimum wage job and they, they can't even afford community college so they just sort of wander until something happens and we hope uh, that most of them can get on a path to success through that program. Um, I'm excited about working with Leadership Associates for the superintendent search. They're a highly reputable company and their plan sounds great and I think they're going to lay out a very, uh, do a very professional and um, inclusive uh, search for us and hopefully bring us some wonderful candidates. And other than that, that's all for tonight. So thank you and have a good week. Thank you, Vice President, Ms. Mrs. O'Kelly. Um, I, I, I also don't have very much tonight. Um, I just wanna say uh, thank you uh, to everybody here tonight. Um, for those of you who <coughs> plan on uh, giving input, providing input and engaging with uh, the search firm, um, I, uh, we welcome you, this board welcomes you and encourages you to uh, participate. Um, and uh, just to just to reiterate some of the things I said earlier, um, we want the process to be fair. We want to uh, encourage everyone and anyone uh, in and outside of this district to apply. Um, and if they do, of course, they uh, should not participate in any of the process uh, for the search. But if they don't, then they're more than welcome to, to participate. Um, and uh, I do want to uh, thank uh, Mr. Islam, our interim superintendent, and uh, all of the cabinet members um, and uh, the administration. Um, we've been making tremendous, tremendous strides um, recently. And um, to piggyback on what one of the parents said up at the podium, we've come a long way. We really have um, from uh, where we've been to where we are today. And uh, in the uh, process of selecting a permanent superintendent, we hope to even go further uh, and beyond. So with that, um, <coughs> good evening. Thank you again. Buenas noches. One more thing, one more thing. Oh I no. forgot. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry, Saida. Um, We'd like to inform our viewing audience that Mr. Douglas Junker, a 26 veteran, 26 year veteran teacher of Rialto Unified School District who retired in 2010, passed away on Saturday, January 16, 2015. Mr. Junker taught at Morgan, Henry and Hugh Banks Elementary Schools and also Rialto and J. Hugh Middle Schools. Mr. Jun Junker was 59 years old. Mr. Junker's public service will be held on Friday, January 23rd, 2015 at 3 p.m. at the Mount Mountain View Cemetery and Mortuary Chapel. On behalf of the RUSD Board of Education, our heartfelt thoughts and prayers are with the Junker family. Um, and if we could just have a moment of silence for Mr. Junker. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned.